Hello everybody. Welcome into the hobby bar. This is Jason. Welcome. If you have any hobby, and feel free to jump in, get some stuff done. If not, that's cool. Today, you see, got really nothing on the table right now. It's because I decided to do this thing, Blood Rack Viper. It's a like, uh, endless spell for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Get a little building done on the uh, for the next project because I wanted to paint this thing up. It'll be fun. So this is the base of the things that's on though. Uh, kind of big. Wasn't really expecting it to be on the big boy base. So uh, these other two uh, models are the other two endless spells that you can build out of the kit. And uh, there's a bunch of flying swords and the other's technically a prayer that you can use with one of your daughters of Cain priests to invoke the big old hand of Cain. And uh, those are on the same size base as the uh, GSC Patriarch that we just finished up. Which is a 50 mil base. So, uh, yeah. Those look kind of tiny compared to, uh, the big old pie plate kind of a thing that the other thing's on. It's on a 100 mil base. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to put away the Patriarch real quick before plopping this thing down on the table. But, uh, yeah, so you'll see both of these do fit across it. So, 100 mil base, because 50 and 50. For across, all right. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna be a big old blood snake, so this will be a fun project. Um, all in all, it was a lot of footage to clip down, so this is gonna be a very, very rough cut job. And uh, yeah, expect a lot of jumping cuts. So, getting into it, uh, just wanted to snip out the various pieces, and for this first part. I'm kind of going to show everything, um, and by everything I mean clip out the sprues, clip off the nubs from where I clipped, because the way I clip, I basically cut away part of the sprue with the piece that I'm clipping off, I don't flush cut right away, so this way once the piece is removed I can flush clip, or, uh, yeah, cut it flush at that point. Yeah, it's a bit easier to clean up in my opinion, so that's why I've done it this way for a while. But, uh, yeah, I noticed after starting to assemble it that the first step, which is going to be this upper part of the snake, it took me, I want to say a good two hours total. <laughs> it was a while, so that's why it's going to be a lot more rougher editing here. And I will only really show cleaning up, uh, the, uh, connection points and mold lines and stuff on this first step. Otherwise, the video would be, I want to say, probably an hour and change long, and really, that's out of the scope of what I was hoping to keep the foot, the length of videos down to, so, uh, yeah. Gonna be, uh, jump cutting around quite a bit because of that. So, anyway, uh, for this thing, I still want to paint it up like a desert snake with blood dripping off of it, so it'll be a fun project. And for this one, I've decided to keep it, um, separate. So I'm doing sub-assemblies on it, which isn't something I usually do. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a fun little experiment. Uses some of the, uh, uh, Pro Acryl Primer on it, since I like using white primer. And that's, a uh, white primer that I have, but onto assembling this thing. Thankfully, the uh, plastic on it is fairly thicker for most of it, which is good because it kind of has to support itself somehow, and obnoxiously enough, uh, kind of supports itself on a lot of little drips of blood, so that'll be fun to figure out. <laughs> What I might do for that is paint up the middle section, the coil of the snake. Just do the snake bit. Then when it comes time to do the blood and connect it to the base, I might connect it all up then. This way it's a cleaner connection for the drips that are holding up the uh, mini. But, uh, yeah. I also decided to cut off this other half of the face. This way I make sure when I'm dry fitting that everything fits up. And I'm pretty meticulous when it comes to assembly. So, 
I wanted to cut out basically all of the dry fitting steps that I was doing, which was quite a bit, and that's why it took me so long to assemble the model. I think total footage was like four hours assembly time for this thing, which is very long, but that's also because I take a lot of time with this stuff. Uh, some might say an excessive amount of time doing Slanesh Proud, but yeah. Thankfully, a lot of the gaps and stuff kind of hide themselves. Um, and big downside is I noticed later on when doing the main coil body of the snake, it's kind of a pain in the butt to line everything up still with the base and have everything connect perfectly. Um, I think what I should have done was reverse assemble effectively. Um, cut out those two parts of the, uh, blood pools. This way those are separate and I can line up portions of the snake body to that as I was making the coil. And like, don't glue it down already since I want to sub-assemble, but at least this way I have the grid effectively to line everything up to and make sure everything's going fine. But for this upper part, kind of didn't need it. So, uh, yeah, just gotta get everything assembled. I figured initially I was just gonna leave that other half of the face off. This way I can make sure I can get into the, uh, get into the mouth easier. But when I tried dry fitting everything together and I got the head together and everything was ready, I was like, I'll grab a paintbrush real quick and try it. It was fine, there was plenty of room. Um, so, yeah, I left the face fully assembled and I'm gonna go ahead and do that all together. So basically all of step one is assembled and... The coil is assembled, those two base pieces, the big 100 mil base, all that stuff. Anyway, um, I think we'll go ahead and leave it off there. Uh, this will be the next project to share with y'all, is this big snake. Uh, kind of doing one of the different things though, um, for uh, like some spots where I find gaps. Uh, what I've started doing is using some of the plastic glue as basically a filler. Just add a little bit more in there and then scrape with the uh, little mold line remover across the gap and that kind of helps hide the uh, hide the gap and get rid of it. So I've started doing that a lot more on this mini. So yeah. Kind of only really going to show that for this first portion though where I'm showing a lot of this cleanup steps and all that. Uh, even though I'm not really showing the dry fit, because, again, I do a lot of that just to make sure I know how things are going to go together after I add glue. But, anyway, I think we'll go ahead and let the rest of the footage play out for this. And just leave you all with the audio going for jumping around and getting stuff done as quick as I can for sharing with y'all. Still running it at two times speed, though, for the assembly, so... Even then, it would have been a really long video, even at two times speed, I probably would have had to boost it to like eight times, and I don't think that's really what I wanted to do at this point, so, yeah. Just let it run it two times, a lot of rough jump cuts, and, uh, just leave it at that for the assembly. <laughs> it's not really the most invigorating of experiences, I know. But, just figured I'd share the process a bit. Um, but yeah. We'll go ahead and leave it off there for the assembly. I want to apologize because later on a lot of background noise shows up. So if you hear some, uh, some, what was it, leaf blower noise, I'm sorry about that. Shouldn't last too long, I think, but it'll be noticeable later on. But with the jump cutting, hopefully it won't be too much of a bother or last too long. But yeah. Go ahead and get this all pieced together, and I'll catch up with you all here in a little while for the uh, last call.
Everybody. Last call, everybody. Last call. So, I figured I'd do something a little bit different on this. Uh, I'll just play back. <laughs> wonder if any of you will catch this as it's going. Uh, but, I think it'll be kind of obvious here in a bit. But, yeah. So, I'm just showing all the different parts that I left it in. So, base by itself. The two different pieces of the, uh, the, uh, effectively sub- sub-base, I guess. The part that connects the mini to the actual base. And then you got the round part for the, uh, snake. Which, that was a bit of a hassle to get for some of the gaps that appeared, but... That's why I wanted it to be, uh, a little bit different. Or, I wanted it to... If I get another crack at it, I'll, uh, assemble that on top of the uh, two portions of the blood pools this way everything lines up and I can be good but anyway and then there's the big upper part of the snake just rest in there since it's also separate so it'll be I think four pieces for the mini five if you want to count the base separate or the hundred mil base that it sits on so that'll be the next part is starting to paint this thing up uh, with that though, hope you all got some stuff done, and uh, have a good one out there, so thank you all for watching, and take care out there.